Entrepreneurial Edge is brought to you by Business Banking from FNB. Because small ideas can lead to big business. FNB, how can we help you? Still with me in the studio, I have Louis Norval, the founder of Adfun Limited, and Ketty Konza, the founder of Nick Technologies. Sorry about that. So um, just to continue with our conversation, now you're in the shopping centre business. They're having a lot of problems at the moment surviving. Everywhere you go, there are shops closing down here in Africa's biggest economy. What kind of shopping centres are surviving this difficult times? Chris, we've always believed that you've got to be in the uh, regional shopping centre space because uh, it's very difficult to replicate them. And obviously, you've got the choice. Um, and the type of uh, shopping centres we have, like Clearwater Mall in Rudderport, Woodlands Boulevard in Pretoria, uh, Garden Route Mall in George, just to name a few, are all regional or super regional shopping centres with a vi wide variety. And even though it's been tough, uh, we just have stood, stood the recession, stood up to the recession much better than sort of any other of the property investments. And if you look at the yields on the, uh, list in the listed sector on the stock exchange, you'll find the, uh, the, the funds with the premier shopping centre assets traded the best yields as well. And yourself, Ketty, I mean, your big concern in the I IT industry is the infrastructure. Yes. Um, I remember a time when people were digging up the roads, laying these fiber optic cables. Whereabouts are we now in the uh, It hasn't stopped, uh, Chris. We still pretty much I uh, think 40% towards reaching our targeted um, goal. Uh, and hence then companies like Koma Technologies are still surviving and doing very well in the market because there's still a lot of work that still needs to be done on the infrastructure side. And uh, is this going to be make it more expensive for people like yourself who are trying to get into the industry? I mean, you're trying to get into this infrastructure and buy your way into it. Is it going to make it more expensive for you? No, no, it, it, it actually... Uh, presents more opportunities for people like myself because obviously because of the gap that's there uh, that's when companies like myself get an opportunity to play there and for me I'm, I'm enjoying the space that actually the country is in terms of development because I have an opportunity to I came in in the market and I can grow with the market you know so if you look at from a point of uh, in comparison with all other global players, we, we're really, really far behind. And you look at other countries in terms of bandwidth, in terms of internet access, uh, accessibility to such uh, tools. I mean, you go into the townships, you, it's still uh, a luxury to have internet. Yes, I know in, in certain suburban areas, people are starting to access these tools and all that. But in other areas like Africa and Europe, you, in the US, you find that you, you can even do, you can make calls for free you can access internet for free in certain areas, if not for free, at least at a minimal fee. And here, the prices are still quite a bit high up if you, in comparison with other players. And that's purely because we're still at that developing and growing phase in terms of the infrastructure. But once you also have reached that uh, level, I think that's where, for me, more opportunities are going to come up at an application level where people can start. We, I'm sure we're going to see more players in uh, like uh, the social networks Facebook, and we're going to see a lot of local players who are going to start playing at that level where they're developing their own applications because there's a good infrastructure to basically uh, test those applications. You know. Now, Louis, in your, in your business, I uh, just mentioned the words higher up, but isn't it a fact that all of the property prices virtually have plummeted in recent years because of what's been going on? Uh, How has that been to handle in your type of business? Oh, I think we've got to differentiate between here and abroad. I think, uh, especially in the States and in Europe, yes, I think uh, with the problems they've been having, property prices have plummeted. South Africa, by and large, in the uh, commercial properties uh, sphere, has escaped that. And even to this day, because of the relatively low interest rates we have, we're still trading at relatively low yields. In other words, we are achieving sort of virtually all-time highs. Uh, for the centres and, and uh, the quality of properties that we're involved in. And one of my favourite questions for entrepreneurs like yourself on the ground, and I'll ask you both this, is where is the smart money going right now in commercial property in your business in, in South Africa? I think by and large it's going into the uh, listed property sector because uh, we're unique. We've still got uh, excellent uh, escalations that we, we grow, so uh, even though you're trading uh, initially, at yields comparative to the uh, to the to the uh, bond market, we are growing every year income by between six and 
eight uh, percent. So a lot of money is still going in that, and that sector has, has uh, blossomed over the number uh, the last number of years. I mean, Katie, where's the smart money going in the IT sector? If you had, if I had a, a million rand to invest, where would you advise? Uh, I think for me, there's still an opportunity, like I mentioned, at an application space. I think purely because of my background, I have an interest in terms of uh, moving into an application space where I can start developing applications, you know, like the Impesa we're making a reference to earlier on, and uh, the social networkings and all that. I, I still believe there's room for African companies to play in that space because we haven't actually explored the talents and the, uh, uh, and the social medias that we have here. And for me, that's where I'll really want to play long term. But there still is a huge digital divide in, yeah. in Africa in particular. True. I mean, uh, I'll, we were talking about applications uh, during the break, but I mean, I see these um, iPads flicking through magazines, etc. but it's still a very, very few people have got them in relative to the whole continent. Exactly, and that's why I'm guaranteed of <laughs> a fair share of the market in the long term, because obviously those are the people I want to save you. Th those are the, that's my market, actually. I mean, one question for you, Louis, all this new technology that's flying around, how does it help you as an entrepreneur in the commercial um, property business? Um, what can you do now that you couldn't do maybe two years ago? <coughs> a lot of the uh, development of, of technology has helped us, especially in the marketing fields. Uh, we, we're using social pages uh, like Facebook, uh, Twitter, etc. as part of our marketing. Um, we also get a lot more information from our customers. All our systems within the centers are, are electronically based. Even the training that we do on site, even down to our service uh, providers, we work very closely with them. And all the training that goes to our cleaners, um, security guards, landscape, etc., is electronically based today. So uh, it's been an enormous help. And obviously, also when you run a national company, you can get standards on the same level because you've got electronic uh, uh, electronic data available at the press of a button, and you can then uh, standardise. Uh, so we've had enormous benefit, uh, both on the marketing as well on the operational side. Uh, through the, the, the fantastic uh, development of uh, electronic media, etc. Now, a question for both of you. You've both been recognized in this competition as successful entrepreneurs in what you do. But I mean, both of you, is this it for you? I mean, are you happy for life now with as your own boss, with your own business? Or do you want to go and do something else? Uh, I'm basically growing. And um, I think even my company itself is at a development phase. Kuma Technologies is just one of the entities that we own. And we are moving into a group level because we, we have an interest, we, we have a drive, we have the energy to move into the JSC sometime. And we've made some couple of acquisitions and to basically grow our portfolio in terms of uh, services in the telecom space. So definitely it's not it. We're still going ahead. And we still have an appetite to even grow further into Africa and maybe even to other countries overseas as the market is allowing you know. So we'll be watching out for your listing on the JSC. And uh, Louis, yourself, um, is this it for you? Uh, are you look, what are you looking for in the future? No, um, Chris, I think it's public knowledge. Just, we've just done a merger with Hyprop. Uh, and by and large, you know, I'm no longer involved from a day-to-day -day point of view. But uh, we excluded all the international assets that were in Ad Fund, uh, so we'll be focusing on that. I think I'll become far more investor-focused rather than a manager focused. Um, we've also started investing in an organic fish farm in East London, which is something very exciting to me. Um, I've also, you know, I believe it's m part of my social responsibility. I'm getting involved in an art gallery that I'm developing in the Cape Town and, I'm, and I enjoy the, the art. Uh, so it's a new challenge and I'm really seeing I'm on the, I've just started the, the back nine uh, if I can use a golf term in my working career. So, you know, I'm just starting out my second half, so I'm nowhere near finished. So, you were saying uh, green fish uh, earlier when we were talking. I mean, can you actually get a rating as a business from the amount of fish that you have in your pond outside your offices? No, well, when I refer to organic or green fish, mm -hmm. it's, uh, there's a SASI rating which rates uh, the, the scarcity and, and the organic side of fish. And uh, uh, we breed uh, dusky cob or cabalio as it's commonly known. Um, our fish are totally mercury free um, and, and yes and they're sustainable so uh, hence all our fish are green, rated green under the, the SASE rating. 
uh, whereas a lot of the couple yo that you get in the restaurants today, people are unaware, but they they very scarce and they're on the red list of the of, of uh, rated by SASE. Okay, gentlemen, both very briefly, we're coming to the end of the show now, is a lot of entrepreneurs watching out there, would-be entrepreneurs, would be looking to go the same way as you. Uh, what would you say is your secret to success? I think it's one is just to follow your instincts, you know. And people often doubt them, often doubt themselves, often doubt the inner spirit inside them, that push that keeps you going every morning. And if I had not listened to that, and if I had not listened to people around me who said, you know what, you had great potential, go out there, utilize it, take advantage of the opportunities that are presented ahead of you. And that's all I can tell anyone, that it's doable, it's possible, anyone can do it. And it doesn't take, uh, as it maybe in the past, people will always say that you need to have uh, good funding to start business. I, I don't believe that. If you have the drive and the right mindset and you have the skills, especially for the area that you want to play in, it's totally doable and it's that easy for Louis? Well, I think you must stop procrastinating and just start it, get going. I think that's the mm. quickest uh, you can do. Secondly, I believe you must believe in what you're going to do absolutely. And if you really believe in it, you must be, prepared, be prepared to swim upstream, take calculated risks and be prepared to fail because through failure actually you get stronger. Mm. Thank you very much, Louis Norval of Adfan Limited, and also Ketim Konza of Uma Technologies. Thank you very much for your time. I'm afraid that's the end of the episode of uh, The Entrepreneurial Edge for this week. Make sure you tune in next week when we take a close look at another case study of a successful entrepreneur.